Hello everyone, welcome to a week of Linux news for the 28th of May 2017. So there's been a bit of security news going on this week, and I've covered that in a separate video, but just to give you a notification of what it was. So there's a vulnerability in Samba, which affects Samba from 3.5.0 onwards. Some news articles have likened it to WannaCry, but that has been completely blown out of proportion because it doesn't affect every setup of Samba. It affects the server side of Samba, serving up files from a Samba share. For example, on a network attached storage device, a NAS device and it also requires write access to the anonymous user account. There are about 600,000 internet accessible Samba devices on the internet with port 445 open, but the estimates of which are actually affected vary between about 90 to about 120,000. If you're using Samba in this method, just get your updates done as soon as you can. If you can't apply any updates, then add the config ntpipesupport equals no to the smb.conf file. There has also been a vulnerability with malicious subtitles threatening Kodi, VLC and Popcorn Time users. So this is malicious subtitles which have been uploaded to the Open Subtitle website. I suppose it could have been uploaded to anywhere else. But if you chose the subtitle, then it had the potential to open reverse shell into your computer. Uh, I think that was more the demonstration side though, so if this exploit was weaponized, then it could go further and, I don't know, do pretty much anything to your system, but in this case, it was a responsible disclosure. Uh, VLC and Popcorn Time already had been updated, and the updates for Kodi came out uh, only, a couple, only a couple of days ago. There's been a new release of the Plasma Long-Term Support Desktop, version 5.8.7, there won't be anything much new in this desktop because the main focus of the work for the KDE Plasma team is on the Plasma 5.10 desktop. But there's been some translation updates and bug fixes. Logout screen, show suspend button only if supported. And on the weather, I think that is saying fix the terminology used for the thunderstorm from the UK Met Office data. This is the full list of changes, and again, I don't think there's anything too prominent there, it's mostly just bug fixes. On my previous video, I mentioned about Image Magic now appearing more this year in terms of number of vulnerabilities discovered. This is the list issued on the updates for Debian. There's nothing too major in terms of the vulnerabilities, they're not too critical. I did say this would be an attack more against servers, but I did notice a comment on the video saying, that image magic is installed as part of um, CUP's printing. Yeah, true enough. Uh, the thing is, the method of attack against it is uh, loading a malicious image file into the image magic libraries, where it could cause a buffer overflow. It is more about the trust of user input, and the question is, do you trust yourself in front of the, your computer? And if you don't, hey, step away from the keyboard. But on an internet server, you have no way of trusting user input. So in that instance, image magic would be used more on PHP for manipulation of images. So as it turns out, Yahoo has retired image magic library after an 18 byte exploit leaks user email content. Security researcher Chris Evans demonstrated the exploit and released details of the security flaw to the public. Evans said the so-called Yahoo bleed number one, <laughs> assuming they're going to be more, of course, Yahoo's security is horrific. I've had my account hacked into before. I have an email account with them, it's just an auto-forwarder. But I was surprised one day when I had a notification stating that my account had been logged into. I thought that was pretty good going because I don't even know what the password is. So perhaps the hacker who got into my account could kindly tell me what my password was. Anyway, I guessed it, got back in, changed the password. So this 18-byte exploit managed to go out of bounds on the memory and triggered off the exploit to which Yahoo awarded researcher $14,000, and ZDNet have pointed out that is a reward of $778 per byte. And he has passed that reward on to charity, to which Yahoo have been most generous and doubled the rewards up to $28,000. From Softpedia, Fedora 26 beta delayed by one week due to bugs, final release expected on July the 4th. So at least this is the thing about Fedora, they slip the deadlines when they don't think they're going to meet them unlike Canonical, who just go for fixed deadlines. Yeah, this is fair enough. Uh, if issues have been discovered, then why not? Uh, it is prudent to move the deadline in order to fix the issues and get a better final release. 
Also from Softpedia, Wine 2.9 releases improved support for Witcher 3 and Need for Speed. So Wine 2.9 introduces support for tessellation shaders in Direct 3D, binary mode support in web services, regedit UI improvements, and clipboard changes detected through X fixes. So that will give some improvements in terms of gaming, so they've listed out The Rise of Tomb Raider, GT Challenge, Final Fantasy XIV, The Testament of Sherlock Holmes, along with a few games from goodoldgames.com. From OMG Ubuntu, Ubuntu wants you to help test the Ubuntu Ambience theme in GNOME. So I guess that shows that Canonical will be using the Ambience theme in the new GNOME version of the desktop. So I was trying to think, didn't I demonstrate something like this already? But no, I think the demonstration was actually in the KDE version. So making KDE look like Unity, and I used an Ambience-like theme. So if you want to help test out these themes, then you can get a copy of the Ubuntu 1710 daily build. Do I have a link of that? I probably do. Do they give it in this article? Uh, no, they don't. Okay, I'll pop a link in the video description. Another article from OMG Ubuntu, a built-in night light feature is coming to KDE Plasma. So this feature already exists in the GNOME desktop, but now we can expect to see the same sort of feature within Plasma and KWIN, and this will be Plasma 5.11 which is due in September. Funny, this is a feature I've never really considered using, a night light, so a changing the color temperature output on the monitor. Isn't this moving between blue and red? So, as we explained when GNOME introduced night light, blue lights from our screens fool our brains into thinking it's still daytime, which in turn affects our circadian rhythm, also known as our internal clock, which in turn impacts our energy. Some studies show that melatonin production, a hormone that regulates sleep and wakefulness, is adversely affected by prolonged exposure to blue light. So does it actually affect me or do I not realise? I don't know, I've been using computers for so many years that I've just gotten used to it really. Maybe it would be interesting to try out. I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Do you make use of the night light in GNOME or do you use something like Redshift? And is it useful? And finally, for this week's stupid news, Florida police seek $25,000 swan sculpture which was stolen by a naked man. <laughs> of course, why would you go wearing clothes? <laughs> the security cameras at Lakeland Cold Storage were recording just before 5am, May the 19th, when a naked man carrying a 5 gallon bucket squeezed for a gap in a fence. A Ford F-150 pickup truck was seen minutes later driving away with a giant black and white swan sculpture in the back. The pickup truck which was stolen was later recovered without the swan, and the naked man has been arrested, but he has not revealed the location of the swan. So we have a naked man, a bucket, and a very expensive, very large stolen swan. Well, as you do, as you do. So that was the week of Linux news. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.